day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, saying, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be saved. someone from the dead? Would you know anything about that? That depends on which discovery it is that interests you. Well, there's a rumor going around that some scientists have discovered evidence of life after death. Would you know anything about that? Not very much. At least not yet. But I have heard of these claims and I have done some work on checking them out. Suppose we start at the beginning. What exactly has been claimed and by whom? Well, the lead scientist is a certain Mary Magdalene of the University of Bethany. She claims that she herself saw a man rise from the dead one day and alive the next. What, what are we talking about here, Doctor? Some sort of ghost? No, 
No, sir, out of the question. Dr. Magdalene claims that what she saw was no spirit, but something that was alive with a solid physical body. There, uh, there wouldn't be a doctor named Frankenstein on your staff by any chance? <laughs> no, no, again. We are not talking about some Halloween story. The claim is for a physical resurrection. Yes, surely you don't believe that. Surely I do not. As a famous person once said, when you're dead, you're dead. That's it. People just don't rise from the dead. Then, uh, then why are you investigating? It's what scientists do, Nathaniel. You might call us professional skeptics. When we hear the rumors of the unbelievable, we check them out as best we can. This is starting to sound familiar. We journalists are another kind of professional skeptic. Can anything good come out of this? That's my motto. I, can, I can't begin to tell you how many unbelievable things I've heard, but then when I check them out, very few turn out to be true. And the true ones are never good. So now tell me, as a scientist, how do you go about checking on these things? Well, scientists have a time-honored tool at our disposal. Something we call the scientific method. The scientific method teaches us that if something really happened, then it can happen again. If you can't make it happen again, then it's unlikely to have ever happened in the first place. That's, that's what the lab's for, right? Correct! The lab is where we experiment and try to recreate whatever is being claimed. I think I know the answer to this one, but have you been able to recreate or otherwise verify a resurrection from the dead? I have not. No, no, I have not. I thought so. I must say, I would have been very skeptical if you had said that you were able to make a dead person alive again. So, what's behind the claim? To be fair, Dr. Magdalene, she does not claim that she herself brought the man back to life. Only she saw it happen. So then, who does she say performed the miraculous act? Get your skepticism ready for this one, Nathaniel. The claim is that the dead man raised himself from the dead. Uh, now I'm totally lost. How could that be even remotely possible? Well, scientifically it isn't. Then, doctor, in your opinion, what did Dr. Magdalene see that made her think someone had risen from the dead? It hurts me to even think about these things, Nathaniel. You see, I have a lot of respect for Dr. Magdalene. We have worked together for several things, on several things for several years. She has always impressed me with, as being a level-headed person. An excellent scientist at that. But? But the latest claim is just too much. You see how it hurts me to think that Dr. Madeline could make such an outlandish claim. When I first heard of this matter, I found myself almost <laughs> wishing that it could be true that the man did rise from the dead. Just to have, just to save the reputation of Dr. Magdalene. So what did happen? <coughs> hmm. Dr. Magdalene must be suffering from some sort of delusion. You mean like a mental illness? Uh, I don't know. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mr. Oh, looks like somebody's been talking about me. Who's this? Dr. Magdalene, ah. <laughs> it, this is Nathaniel, a newspaper reporter from, uh... The, the Chronicle. Very nice to meet you, ma'am. Uh, same. I, I suppose Tom's told you too much about me already. <laughs> oh, no. Not nearly enough. I understand you saw someone rise from the dead. And what's more, it was the dead man himself who did the raising. Is that true? It's true, absolutely. How, uh, how can that be? I saw it happen with 
these two eyes. How it happened, I cannot tell. But it did happen all the same. Unbelievable. And I mean that literally. People don't rise from the dead. A human body, once dead, ordinarily stays that way. I've worked on a lot of murder cases. That's how it goes. I promise you, Nathaniel, that there is nothing ordinary about the human body, especially this one. <laughs> wait! Wait a minute, Thomas. Can it be that you didn't mention to this reporter just who it was that rose from the dead? Yeah, I did not. <sighs> who, who was it? It was Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, what? That, that can't be good. Is this Jesus person someone you know? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> he certainly is. I'd call him a good friend. Another scientist. Well, not really. Well, sort of. Uh, 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 a doctor, a philosopher, a, a counselor. He's hard to put in one category. Sounds like quite the guy. Uh, but a friend all the same? Yes, to both of us. And much more of a, than a friend. Isn't that right, Thomas? Yes, that's right, Mary. He had a special kind of attraction for us. I love the man like a brother, a father, or both rolled into one. There are a number of us who felt that way about Jesus. That's why we were simply crushed when he was murdered. Not murdered? I knew this couldn't be good. So you both saw him dead? Oh yes, definitely dead. And then you, Mary, saw him alive again? Absolutely. Now, uh, forgive me, but it, it's not unusual for someone under stress to think that they see something that they merely want to see. Like a loved one who passed away you're coming alive again. I promised you, Nathaniel, I am not deluded. Jesus was alive. Just as alive as you and I are right now. Okay, but uh, you didn't bring Thomas around to see this Jesus to prove he was alive again? So we could see with his eyeballs. Not that I didn't ask. Okay, I wish I could have. But so far, Jesus hasn't been very easy to locate. I just don't know where he is. Eventually, I think I will be able to bring Jesus and this doubting Thomas together. But until then... Until then, when my eyes don't see and my hands don't touch, I don't believe. Oh, Thomas, why can't you believe? You know me, and you know I would never lie to you. I know you're not lying. I know you believe it's true. Well, then, don't believe me. But can't you believe Jesus? Think about it for a bit. Think with your heart. If anyone could raise from the dead, can't you believe it would be him? I don't know, but you're right. It's almost possible to believe of him anyway. Almost possible. But I'm still a scientist. So am I. But this skepticism we're all so fond of is overrated, if you ask me. Even for scientists. But we wouldn't be scientists if it weren't for our scientific method. Okay, that's true. But say there's more to the human being than science, and more to science than skepticism. <laughs> I mean, everyone has doubts. Some of us, some of us, make a profession out of it. If you want people to have faith, in this Jesus person, or in anything else for that matter, doesn't that kind of leave us out? 
seems to me that doubters are automatically disqualified. Yes, everyone has doubts, but everyone also has faith. You, Nathaniel, you have faith in your ability to get the facts. You must also have faith that there are such things as facts, correct? I mean, when you're right, you're right. Just as my friend Thomas has faith in his scientific method, he has faith in what his eyes and his hands tell him, tell you. He, you heard him say that. I, uh, uh, yep, I did, I did indeed. Okay, doubts are normal. We couldn't survive without them. They are forgivable, I would say, but they are not the goal of our existence. Do I need to ask, like, what is the goal of our existence, though? I'll bet you I know! It's faith, isn't it? Yes! It's faith, knowing and believing, even trusting, alongside of our doubts, and in spite of our doubts. If we didn't doubt, if we can, if we can doubt and still trust, that's faith. Me. Yes, Thomas, my friend? Go find Jesus. No, really. I honestly want to tell you to go find him. I want to believe that he's alive. I'll bring him to you first. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye, Dr. Michael. You know this means I don't have a story, right? I can't write about a scientist who has faith. Of course you have a story, Nathaniel. There's a scientist here who works through his doubts. He's open to the truth, even if it comes from unconventional sources. You also have a story about the resurrection. So now you think he did rise from the dead? Oh, either he did or he didn't. If he didn't, you can write the story of a scientist who made a mistake? If he did, I don't need to tell you what to write about. I guess I could get used to writing good news for a change. Oh, so you believe it too? Well, let's just say I'm willing to follow the leads and see for myself. Your friend Mary did make a good point about doubts. They're not an end in themselves. And bad news isn't a good thing, even if it does tend to sell newspapers. So we do have a lot in common. Scientists and reporters. You know, I think we really do. Well, good luck with your story, Nathaniel. Thanks, and good luck with your uh, research. Uh, yes, and thank you for coming. Thank you.